a wintry Wednesday morning. A group of intrepid explorers is about to descend deep underground. And they're taking me with them. Ahead lie tight squeezes, bruising crawls and total darkness. But we're not in some far-flung location. We're not even in the Mendips. No, this adventure begins on the side of a road in Southmead. Well, that's my last chance for a wee gone. My guides are Linda and Chris. And they're taking us to what looks like an unremarkable manhole in the woods. In fact, it's the entrance to a natural wonder, Penn Park Hole, a cave so extraordinary it's just been declared a site of special scientific interest, a triple SI. And there's a bit of a knack for getting in it. Laura, yeah. down like I am, then on your tummy. Let me give this. Give my fingers to defrost. Okay, Laura, if you come down, your left leg sideways. Now is not a time to forget which leg is what. It's quite slippy. Okay, oh yes. I'm trying not to slip on the slide. It's muddy, dark and damp. Cameras and lights prefer to be clean and dry, so filming is a major challenge. It'd be just nice to get the shot from the other side. Yeah, we can get Jez over there. Yeah. We've only come about 20 metres into the cave, but it feels like a different world. Laura, you're just coming into the first chamber of the cave now. People coming into the cave actually had to mine through that bit. You can actually see on the wall there, there's evidence of where people drilled shot holes and blasted to make this passage wider. What were they looking for? In the middle of the 1800s, people were coming here looking for lead. And what they found down here is this enormous layer of crystal in the cave. It's about a foot thick. If you look on top, the crystals just look brown. It was sticking up, they call them dog tooth crystals. Mm -hmm. And then when it was broken off by the miners, that's when you see this, this sort of white crystalline effect. The miners weren't the first people down here. The world's first published cave survey was done here in the 1600s. That survey didn't include the resident wildlife. In this tiny pool lives a recently discovered creature, the Penn Park Prawn. That's not its real name. They're called Nephagus coccineus, and they are um, really important here. They're not, they're not normally found in large underground lakes like, like we find them here. They're a species that are found in chalk aquifers. They are very small, they're about two to three millimetres long, and they arrived here, we believe, through the, the groundwater system. They feed on whatever they can find, basically, they're omnivorous. Just We've notice seen on, the, flies, on the surface we? there's a few <laughs> flies, but, uh, so they'll, they'll have them for dinner. Oh my goodness. It was a tight squeeze to get this far, but that was nothing compared with what comes next. Turn onto your stomach now. Go on your side. Yeah, onto your side, then your stomach. Your feet are about six inches off the floor. Oh there you God, go. That's You're the down. dangling feet bit. Oh my goodness. Wow. It is wow. I've just not got to feel terrified of the closed space. Slightly awkward. It's kind of like mounting a horse. <laughs> Except a rather no, hard I'm stuck. one. <laughs> no, you're stuck. How much further? Do you want an ice cream? Yes, please. And a wee. <laughs> what have we you? got here? This yeah. is where you've got the later stalactite. Wow. But this is all an awful, this is a lot younger than the rest of the crystals. The squeezing and the crawling are worth it. <laughs> I feel like we're getting to a bigger bit. It's getting bigger. It's getting more open, isn't it? it feels like you're coming into a bigger space. Yeah, it does. That's because you are. Oh my goodness, after coming through those squashy, tiny, rocky bits, now to be like this. It feels so much better. Honestly, I can't tell you. Even though we're further underground, so I should actually be more scared. It actually feels better simply because the rocks aren't quite so close to my face. Oh my goodness! 
Yes, this is what we've done it all for. <laughs> wow! This is the immense cave. This is what we've come to see, isn't it? Yeah. Down there, from top to bottom, you've got a chamber that's about 200 feet down. Up there, that's okay. where the first entrance to the cave was. So the original people would have come down that enormous slope there, on a rope, with candles. Because they were brave, bonkers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all of those things. It's hard to believe where we're standing is only about 25 metres under the streets of South Mead. At the bottom of this huge chamber is a lake whose level rises and falls by as much as 25 metres and no one really knows why. The only way I'll see it right, here we go. is to lean out over the edge. If I can see the water. So, and I can see it. Can I tell you how I see it? Because there are actually ripples just on the edge of the lake at the bottom and that water is a long way down. More shrimps live down there but they're not the only reason the cave is so precious. In terms of what makes it a triple SI, what really excites you Chris? It's uh, the best known hydrothermal cave in the, in the UK so hydrothermal caves um, are quite different from most other caves. So it's formed by um, hot water rising up from beneath rather than cold water descending and and that's what that's what created cr created the amazing cavern we're with we're within now i know you've told me that it's quite safe but have there ever been any accidents or scary stories uh, unfortunately yes oh. we're going right back to 1775 when a chap called reverend Newnham came out here with his girlfriend and a friend one afternoon for a picnic mm -hmm. and he saw a hole in the ground, flung his arm round the round a branch of a tree that was hanging over the hole. He Got wanted it. to swing out to look and see what was down the hole and the branch broke. Oh, goodness. And so Reverend Newnham plummeted to his doom down about 200 feet down the rock. There is a bit of a twist in the tail to Reverend Newnham. The day before his unfortunate accident, he preached a sermon in which he'd said that sinners would be cast down into the deepest pit of damnation. I wonder what he'd been up to. Makes you wonder. <laughs> this is as far as we go. Time now to retrace our steps, our scrambles and our crawls back to the entrance 100 metres away. When the cave was formed some 200 million years ago, I'd have been emerging into a world ruled by dinosaurs. Instead, it's into a welcome breath of fresh air. I have totally lost track of any sense of time. Down there, you just have absolutely no clue. I can hardly believe that it's still daylight. It feels like we've been down there forever. The mud and the bruises are worth it for the privilege of being one of the few people ever to have explored Penn Park Hole. And thanks to being made a triple SI, the cave is protected and the Penn Park prawns can have their dinner in peace. That's it for now. Don't forget there's much more on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>